Last week, CH made a video talking about DIY temperature control with home brewing. How to use Mother Nature as a resource. The do and do nots of temperature control without spending little to no money. But spending no money can require more time and more effort. This video, we're going to do the exact opposite. We're going to talk about spending money, but what we should buy and why. As a brew house is different from one brewer to another. Homebrew glycol chillers are awesome, but they do cost an arm and a dick. Let's talk about them and compare them to water cooling systems. Glycol. It is the radiator of your brew house. Think of it as antifreeze. Liquids that can cool things down and not freeze up the pipes, unlike water. Every single commercial brewery has jacketed fermenters. With jacketed fermenters comes glycol chillers. It's temperature control on a commercial scale. Generally, they're on the roofs of breweries because they take up space and they're so loud. It's pretty much a generator that's almost always on, but this is what they look like. It's got refrigeration components that keep it cold, and then it's gonna run it through PVC pipe that are gonna go through the brewery, and then it's gonna go into each fermenter. People that have indoor gardens and aquariums use the same type of thing, water chillers. Brands are coming out with cooling system from home brewers. Home brewing cooling systems cool from the inside out. They're gonna have a coil that goes into your wart, and for commercial breweries, it's gonna be in the walls of the stainless steel. <laughs> A cheaper alternative to a homebrew glycol chiller. Glycol is generally about a 65-35 mixture that freezes at 9 degrees Fahrenheit. 65% water, 35% glycol. Water obviously freezes at 32 degrees at our sea level, at most sea levels. So glycol means you can get colder temperatures, but you may not need glycol. Just keep watching the video to see if water works for you. The difference between glycol and water, the whole pulse of this video for a homebrew scale is automatic versus manual. A glycol system is gonna have refrigeration components that are gonna keep the mixture cool automatically from the motor. A water system is gonna need ice and we gotta keep putting ice back in it for it to work. Here's how the system works. You have a reservoir. In most cases, it's gonna be a cooler filled with water and ice. You have a submersible pump that goes into the water that's connected to our vinyl tube. This is our commercial PVC metaphor. The coil is going to have two ends. One where the cold water comes in or the glycol comes in. It's going to transfer through the coil and out of the other side of the coil and back into the cooler through a second vinyl tube. It's pretty much just a water fountain with a cold reservoir. That's pretty much it for the water cooling systems. A submersible pump, a coil that fits your fermenter, a temperature control. You might already have one. You might already have an ink bird and a jacket that goes around your fermenter that's made out of wetsuit material. But now we have to test the efficiency. How long does it stay cool? I just tried it with that little red Coleman and it didn't even stay cool for less than maybe 45 minutes to an hour. If I need to change the ice out three to four times a day, then this stinks. I cannot use this. It's time to break out the big dog, the 60 quart cooler. This is the one that I pre-chill in. I recommend everybody have one of these. The whole goal with this is just to add ice once a day. If I can add ice once a day, then I totally vouch for this product and I totally vouch for this system. I'm kind of worried about it though. I'm looking at the coil, it's a little bit thin. The good thing about the Anvil cooling system, it's the cheapest one on the market and it's the only one that's universal. I believe it's just a size seven bung. It's got the four holes right here and the thermal well with the airlock. I think the fact that it, it being universal is the biggest part. I mean, you could buy a conical fermenter for 600 bucks or $800 but then they're gonna sell you the proprietary water cooling system for another $400. And I'm sure it looks good, I'm sure it works, and that's all pretty and all, but I've never had $1,000 my whole life. Let's see how efficient it is. For those who watch this channel know that I am the warlord of ice. If anybody has ice, I want in. I'm gonna steal your fucking ice. Now, I always have lettuce drawers and water bottles filled up with ice. My only goal in life is to never pay for ice. We're going Mythbusters today, fam. We're gonna fill up my cooler with just a little bit of water just to make sure that the pump is submerged. Now, I'm gonna take this 30-pound chunk of ice and I'm gonna put it in my cooler slash reservoir. You can leave the container in there. Doesn't matter. Plug in the temperature control. It's hot in my garage. We're really gonna test this thing out today. But first, let's catch Calibrate it. Inkbird temperature controls are awesome on both commercial and homebrewing scales. Immediately start filling up more ice. Again, our whole goal is we only have to fill this up 
once every 24 hours. This can save us spending $900. I've got a ball lock lightly fastened to the outgoing tubing just to keep it from spraying all over the cooler. Like most pumps, the anvil only has one speed, but the vinyl tubings are very light. So I just want to put a little bit of weight on it to avoid waking up to a big puddle in the morning all over my garage. Okay, now we got to see if we trust our thermal well. There's four holes in the bung that the anvil provides. Two for the coil, one for the airlock, and one for the thermal well. That's touching the wart so we can always know the precise temperature. I'm going to add the ink burr to my five gallons of water, aka fake beer, and boom, both at 72. The thermal well read works perfectly. So far, so good. 82 degrees in my garage. Horrible temperature for most ale yeast. Let's set the temperature control to 65 and let's gauge it. Okay, so my reservoir is 38 degrees Fahrenheit, which is awesome. The outside temperature is 82. I set my temperature control for 65. The coldest it can get down to right now is 69. I can live with that. It looks like the pump's gonna be going nonstop in the daytime right now in Southern California. Five hours later, I came back to see the reading at 64 at nighttime. My block of ice was still kicking ass. Nighttime garage temp is 75 degrees. Day one is in the books. Day two, wake up, drink coffee. Still at 65 degrees. Our ice is still kicking ass. It's just the same piece of ice. And we got our reserve ice waiting on standby. Let's check out the cooler. It's still holding it down, 38 degrees. I'm getting happier and happier. Came back later that evening around 6 p.m. Still at 65. It's been 65 degrees all day. So we already made it 24 hours. Ice block is pretty much melted, but the water's still at 42. Day two is in the books. Day three, reservoir is still holding. The ward is at 66. It's amazing I have temperature control from this teeny little coil and pump for 72 hours. All we needed was 24. I removed some water and I added this eight pound block of ice. Fill up these gallon water bottles and you can change these out easily and effortlessly all day. Can it lager? Yes. I set the temperature control to 50 and I just took my fermenter and put it in the cooler because it can fit. Probably should have taken the jacket off. Long story short, I got 36 hours under 50 degrees with just this water bottle filled with ice. I did not even put one of those big blocks of ice in it. It actually got too cold, so I had to put some room temperature water in it. If I jump the gun on how this works, you set your temperature control to a target temperature, the wart goes above, then the pump knows when to turn on. The pump will run until it hits the set temperature and then it turns off. It just goes back and forth like a refrigerator or a furnace. That is it for the video! That took a long while because we wanted to make it as organic as humanly possible. Here's my mic. How's my mic sound up? That's it. Uh, this Anvil water cooling system is awesome, but it's only as good as your quantity of your reservoir. You wanna use it as a logger, take your fermenters, doesn't matter if it's plastic, stainless steel, as long as it fits in your cooler slash reservoir, you're cooking with grease, fam. I'd like to thank the Academy. We will have links. We will have links for everything that we vouch for. Some of the stuff we don't vouch for, we do not put links in the description. I totally recommend getting this 60 quart cooler for this, temperature control, as well as pre-chiller. This is how I'm able to cool my wart down in 20 minutes. So, so that's it, it comes down to you. Do you wanna spend close to $1,000 on a commercial, no, not a commercial, a, do you wanna spend $1,000 on a home brewing glycol chiller? I mean, they work, they all work the exact same. It's just a matter of it getting refrigerated through a motor or you just getting off your lazy ass and putting some ice in, draining the plug out, putting ice in. It's your call. There's no right or wrong. Uh, I can't really justify why I would buy a homebrew glycol chiller for $1,000 unless maybe I had a big operation, maybe like three 10 to 15 gallon fermenters going at once and maybe they were all loggers and I had to pull a lot of cold water from that. But at that point, knowing me, I would just make one. And we'll probably make one in a future video because every week, every week, I go on Craigslist and I find a chest freezer that's free. People just want you to pick it up. Get a bucket, pour some glycol into it. Booyaka shot boy, that's it. Let me know in the comment section if you bought one and this video totally offends you. I have found the Anvil cooling system all over the internet, ranging anywhere from 100 bucks to 120 bucks. And probably the best thing to this whole video, you might not even need this $120 system. I mean, if it's universal with the bung, all you might need, you probably have a pump. You probably already have an ink bird temperature control. And what would you need? You would just need the coil and maybe the jacket. So you could pull this off for maybe $20. Do the math, do both maths. Which math sounds better? Go with that math. 
I mean, if you have a lot more money than me and most people do, live your life, spend whatever you want. Shout out to Brian, short-circuited brewer for letting me steal his video to make my video. And that's it. Thank you, Brian. Thanks for answering all my questions. There's a lot of good home brewing channels out there and they're all a little bit different. Check them out. Check out the broadcast. We do a, we're gonna start taking the broadcast and moving it over to a new channel. And I think we're gonna start tomorrow night. It's Monday right now. What, what, it's Monday. What year is it? It's Monday, 2 p.m. My time right now. Hopefully this video gets out. Right, to compete with Monday Night Football. I think that's it. This is uh, up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, BA start. That's it, ladies and germs. Time to go visit my girlfriend. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you're here, you're looking at my shitty face. And thanks for watching that video. It took a while, we did it as organic as possible. I probably already said that. I already know like, I only know like 12 things to say. I don't know if you guys watch the broadcast, but I only know like 12 things to say. I just keep saying them over and over again. Cheers to eating good. Cheers to drinking good. I think it's a good idea, kind of going back to the whole like GoFundMe thing we talked about, where it's like, there are people in the world that want to go into a brewery and see their name on like a fundraiser thing or like a Kickstarter thing. And um, like Bear Roots, they do $100 membership mm -hmm. for a year. And you get to drink out of a mug. So it's a 20 ounce glass. Right. And uh, I mean, you got to... <laughs> You gotta spend a lot of money there to get your money back to make that hundred bucks back. That's like a hundred pints, you know. Like you gotta. But the cool thing is, those people are gonna keep coming back. They're gonna. Spend it's a neighborhood their, bar. There, it's a neighborhood. It's a neighborhood exactly. bar. It's their local. It's, right. It's, it's it's a creature of habit bar. So we people a, love that. And if you have like kind of that like I don't know, I, people pay for country clubs. People pay fifty thousand dollars a year to eat fucking omelets and golf. And like, this is such a hyper local industry. Sure. Too. Like if you had a brewery on that corner over there. That out of mug club membership, you probably pay for I it. I would want it. You would want it because you're going to walk there every day. And I would probably sell it. Like if I owned a brewery, I probably would have some sort of like. We have a mug club membership and it's mostly for people get their money's worth real quick. Yeah, we do uh, would, same thing. 22 ounce mug for a 16 ounce price. You get 10% for off. For a year. For one year, you get 10% off your uh, deli sandwich purchases. And then we have random like without COVID two to three events a year. Um, it's been a little weird right now. Yeah. Um, but people get their money's worth real quick because they're getting 10% off their um, their 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 deli meal. You know, come to the come visit us 10, 20 times. You'll pay for the membership just in discounts. And everyone's got their own kind of like, you know, everyone has they want to know, they 10 want... off merch or, or half off, not half off merch. But we know them by name. It's their local cheers. Right. You know, like... And your beers aren't even expensive to begin with. No. Like, would, yeah. Yeah. I would do it. So um, I think it's a good idea. I think, I, I, again, I think it's a community thing. Like you would never do it at like, you know, it's totally a community. You would never do it at like Chili's. Right. Or like 100%. Islands. Yeah, yeah. You'd be the biggest scumbag in the world if you went into Islands and were like the regular. Here's like, my club. Well, yeah. like, you know, the Islands like there every day just perving on the Hooters chick. Hooters, dude. Imagine if you were like the Hooters mug, mug club guy. That'd be great. Get a free wing every day. Dude, you'd yeah. look like Newman from Jurassic Park, man. You're just that guy. <laughs> perving out all day. Do we still um, have Hooters around here? Hooters is around. I know they the one off the 78 shut down. Hooters is tight, dude. Yeah, I've never been. It's over to have my wedding. <laughs> and my funeral. <laughs>